Хорн, доктор в области управления проектом, проектами, генеральным управляющим директором компании Stakeholder Management Play Ltd, членом Австралийского института менеджмента и членом Австралийской компьютерной ассоциации и нашему теперь научному другу и коллеге из Австралии. Пожалуйста. Uh, where we're starting. 
starting to introduce stakeholder engagement and management techniques there for the, the project management master's students, and we're starting to develop a PhD in stakeholders. So from a time 13 years ago where nobody wanted to talk to me and it was very hard to get people to listen, we're now finding, thanks to the internet, the website, emails, blogs that we do, uh, and all sorts of e-books and other sorts of uh, support through at the electronic media, I've actually been able to get people interested in what I have to say. So this is how we did it, conference papers, web journals. We were able to build a reputation through training, and the same way that the, um, the online shops do, we've, we've got a place where people can give their feedback. And like TripAdvisor or any of the other electronic ways of uh, finding out the experiences of other people, we're able to do that as well. So people can check us out before they buy from us. I do a weekly blog, uh, mainly on project management, and project managers are really busy people. And so they just want to read about the things that are concerning them at the moment. But I do a weekly blog, and it actually uh, is now circulated globally. We get lots of feedback from people everywhere. Or monthly blogs on more strategic issues, um, we publish in e-journals, project management, um, and also my software I make available uh, for free for 30 days. So, we're, uh, and it's downloaded off the internet. So all I can say is that social computing is a wondrous thing and it's made a difference to the, the story that I want to tell about the importance of people and the work that everybody does. This is an example of the website. So you can see there are lots of blogs there. We talk about the books that we write. And there's lots and lots of opportunities for people to respond to us. So we make it as interactive as possible. And it's been one of the best vehicles for us for spreading our ideas. So how, can, how did we measure success? How did we know as we were embarking upon our electronic crusade to have people understand more about stakeholders. So social computing analysis techniques and tools offer lots of information. So we know now how many hits we get, we know how long people stay on the website, we know how many moves they make to other links, we know what they download, we can count the number of papers that people download every month. And of course we, we, we can record the comments and the interactions as well. And dollars of sale are always a very good indicator in a business such as mine of how successful it is. And so there are lots and lots of mechanisms now to let us know about reach. But there's not necessarily very much that tells us whether or not the information that we're wanting people to absorb is actually being received. And once again, this comes down to something far more basic than the social computing or technology or any of those other things, it comes back again to people. If we want people to get information, if we want people to buy from us, if we want people to understand what it is we're trying to say, we have to keep in mind the needs of those people with respect to the information that we send. And so online purchasing companies do it very well. Uh, well, certainly the ones that I buy online from, and they are mainly Australian and US based. So they have very attractive sites, they show prices, they also have a place for people to give comments. So before you buy, you can actually see what other people's user experiences was, were. And so from that point of view, it's a long way going, moving towards making sure that the, the websites are tailored, the marketing uh, for organisations are better tailored to the audience. But there's still the question of, how do I actually make contact with that person? How do I know if that individual person or group are so important to me uh, that I need to tailor a message specifically? So I just want to now report on, before leading to answering that question, I wanted to report on some research that's been done in my part of the world uh, by a university in Melbourne. And what they did was they conducted a research, uh, research survey in Indonesia where they believe there's the highest concentration of social media users in the region at least, but possibly in the world. And these were uh, Indonesian uh, young people aged between 18 and 25. And from those surveys they came to the conclusion that these were the reasons why people use social media. 
to build a, so a sense of community uh, is the most important aspect, but there seem to be four separate reasons for using social media and for connecting to other people. Uh, one was seeking information. So what we've discovered, and certainly my work in university has supported that, is people don't read so much anymore. They're not so much interested in reading thick books. What they want is to know where to get information. So Google is obviously a good starting point, but uh, what young people uh, from this survey also said is that they seek information from each other. Where can I find information about such and such? Uh, and sometimes it's really uh, deep and important stuff. Sometimes it's just basic living stuff, like where is the best party this week? Or where can I get the best coffee in Indonesia? So information seeking seems to be one of the main reasons why these particular people uh, use social media. They do it for enjoyment, to pass the time, to for entertaining themselves, to listen to music. And certainly in Melbourne, where I live, uh, there's a high proportion of use of public transport. And I find these days that I may be one of the only people not texting or listening to music. And everybody else does of every age group. And so enjoyment seems to be one of the other two of the uh, most important reasons for people to use social media. But also to maintain social ties. So weak ties, similarly, uh, similar to LinkedIn, making contact with people who uh, they don't necessarily have a great deal in common with, but may be a friend of a friend or may eventually uh, share an interest of some sort, whether uh, large or small. But of course the strong ties are the ones that seem to be the, one of the most important aspects of building that sense of community amongst the younger uh, users of social media. And this is also uh, talking about trust. Sergio talked about trust earlier on. This seems to be also one of the, the main parts where people who use social media in these environments build that sense of trust. So they share information, they, they communicate continuously. Because they have so many shared interests, they're building that sense of trust all the time. And so uh, from that point of view, it seems to be the, the strongest and most important reason why uh, young people in that part of the world use social media so much. So this, of course, has implications for marketers, this has implications for trainers. Um, as I said earlier, I, I teach at a university in Colombia, in Bogota, and I'm constantly asked by my students to provide more social media content in my, in my lectures. And it's a bit hard for me because um, all of my stuff is in English, and so I have to keep searching YouTube continually to find similar information, but in Spanish for them. So uh, that's one of the ways that I've had to change my teaching methods just to fit in with the, the needs of the social media generation for information in different ways. And of course, this where this circle is, is where my networks were 